Hi, Curtis in Seattle. Today we're going to put together the tools that we need to clean the Ravelli Francesca pellet stove. I've already blown off my walkway, but the crows walked in the snow. And they left footprints everywhere. That's what all these are. There's one up there somewhere. So let's go in the shop. I've already got the heat on in here and it's cranking away. It looks like looks like it's up to about what does that say 53 degrees? I think it was started out at 49. Let's go look at the shop cooling system. Oh yeah, it's in freeze mode. I can hear it. Looks like it's 30 degrees outside, so it's in freeze mode. So the tools you're going to need to clean this pellet stove is a 516 socket set up as a nut driver. I guess uh, 8 millimeter is the same size, or similar size. I need a wrench on the back of the stove. There's a, the, the flue runs up really close to the stove, so I end up using an 8 millimeter wrench. You need some sort of a scraper or a putty knife. You're gonna need a brush to get down inside those galleries after you take the Fire X out. I'll have a link down in the description for a similar brush I found on Amazon. So this brush is four inches long here, an inch and a half in diameter, and 15 and a half inches overall. The brush on Amazon is an inch and a quarter in diameter, but otherwise it's very similar. I think it'll work fine. You may or may want, may or may not want a inspection mirror to see how you're doing if you, uh, you can't see around a corner. If you take off your flue, there may be some tape on it and you're gonna to wanna to get some high temp tape. This is good for 600 degrees. It's an aluminum tape made by 3M. You're gonna want a couple of drop cloths. I like to tape the edges of the drop cloth uh, down to the floor to keep any crap from, from dropping down and getting underneath the drop cloths. It also keeps the drop cloths from moving around. You're gonna need some attachments for your, your shop vac, and you'll need a brush for sure. This is the standard inch and a quarter uh, diameter shop vac, shop vac brand brush. I tried using a crevice tool the first couple of times I cleaned the stove and it they don't work. They're not long enough. Uh, they can't reach around corners very well. I even tried putting a cereal box on the end of it, taping a cereal box to make an extension and that didn't work. So what I came up with was a piece of tubing I got from the hardware store. This is 32 inches long. It is three quarters of an inch in diameter on the inside, an inch in diameter on the outside. And this fits snugly inside my Pelvac ash separator hose. So I don't have to have anything to, uh, to make that fit like some tape or something. If you have a shop back brand, hose it does not fit in there for some reason this is a little bit smaller than this piece here so you could uh, use some duct tape just use some duct tape and just tape tape the end tape it on the end and of course you're going to need something to clean your flue if you have a short flue that runs out the back of your stove you can use something like this this is uh, a couple feet long um, this is a Lint Eater brand rotary dryer duct cleaning brush that's modified, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. The reason why I did that, of course, you need to drill to drive it. And I almost forgot, you're going to need a flashlight also. I've had this Lint Eater vent cleaning kit for a long time. It works with the 4-inch dryer vent. And here's the brush for it. It's four inches and it's a spiraled and it, it really helps pull itself through the vent system and go around corners and it works extremely well. Uh, the kit come, came with uh, 12 feet of extensions and uh, I bought 
12 more feet of extension. So I'm, I've am i invested pretty well in this type of, of system. The, the kit that Lint Eater made for a flue, for a three inch flue for like a pellet stove, had different threads on the end of the extensions. So it was different than that. And I decided I didn't really want to invest in another kit, another 18 to 20 feet of extensions. So I bought a Lint Eater Junior kit. It had the same four inch diameter brush in it. And I gave it a haircut. So this brush is four inches in diameter and this one is now a little over three inches in diameter. And this centerpiece is an inch. So if you cut the bristles to a little over an inch on each side, I think this is an inch and a sixteenth, then you'll have a three and an eighth inch diameter brush. I'll be using my dedicated rigid shop vac. Uh, I've used this for about three years. It works really well. It, it really uh, doesn't put any dust into the air. And I just recently changed the filter. I put a VF3500 in it, which is what it had before. So it's got a brand new filter, it's all cleaned out. And the reason I did that is because I have a new ash separator by Pelvac. It's all steel. And it came with this high temp hose. And I got lucky because this fits really well on top of the Pelvac ash separator. And then I went to Lowe's and I got some vac fittings and I modified them a little bit and they fit on here really well now. So this piece fits on there. This is a standard inch and a half, I believe. Inch and a quarter, I mean. Inch and a quarter shop vac. And this fits right on there. So I'm good to go. I'll do a review of this uh, after I'm done cleaning the pellet stove. Now the day before your deep cleaning, you need to start prepping for it. And we're going to let the pellets run out. Right now, it's still got quite a few pellets in it. And it's still fairly early today. So um, one thing that helps is to have a stick that can reach down into these bars here and push the pellets down towards the auger and, and keep the pellets as low as possible. Or I should I say close to the auger as possible. Uh, this will keep you from having to vacuum as many pellets out of your hopper. The reason why I do my own deep cleaning is because when I first got the stove in December of 16, the installer came and he opened the door and he threw a handful of pellets in and he started it up and I asked him why he did that and he said, well, during shipping, uh, sometimes the auger doesn't have any pellets on it so it doesn't start properly and uh, later I read that there's a button or should I say a sequence of buttons here that he could have done to have the auger advance and fill itself up, fill itself up with pellets. And almost immediately after that first day, I started having a lot of failed startups. Uh, the burn pot just didn't have enough pellets in it. So I looked online and I found the RDS setup and, and also uh, some of the codes to change the amount of pellets that dropped into the burn pot, I started playing with that. Okay, we're gonna take off the side panel here um, and I'll show you the other reason why I do my own deep cleaning. When they first installed this stove, they put some of that aluminum tape on this joint here. And this is a factory piece, and that's the factory fan housing. And you would think that would be okay, but it got so hot that that tape uh, off gassed and it started to burn a little bit. And so for the first three years that I had the stove, after the stove had been running for a long time on high, it would stink. And we'd go to bed and we'd wake up the next morning and have a sore throat. And uh, one day I took the, the side panel off here and I realized that this tape was all burned on here. And so I, I took the that factory elbow off of there and. There's a silicone gasket inside there. It doesn't need to be taped. Um, and it doesn't really get that hot. You know, what is it? 
to about 2, 285, 290. But that was just high enough without having a high temp aluminum tape to peel off and stink. This is high temp aluminum tape and it's really not that much cooler here. Is that 270, 280? But it doesn't have any problems. Anyway, that's the reason why I decided to do my own cleaning. I figured they didn't know what they were doing. All right, the Ravelli Francesca stove is all back together. And in the next video, we'll be taking the stove apart, showing you how to do a deep cleaning and also how to reset the service hours. As you know, every 2200 hours, the alarm goes off and requires it to be reset after you've cleaned it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.